This is Fred. Fred is an infectious bacterium. Fred has lots of bacterial friends, and they were all living happily until antibiotics entered the picture. Now, many of Fred's friends are dying from an antibiotic called colistin, that green stuff that you see here. But Fred has a very special gene, that little red one called MCR1. It lives on a plasmid, which is a small circular piece of DNA that exists outside of the normal bacterial genome. The rest of his DNA, that blue stuff, is pretty much the same as everyone else's. But because of his MCR1 gene, Fred isn't affected by colistin. Now, Fred the bacterium has a way to help all of his friends. It's not in his best interest for all the other bacteria to die from colistin, and he is the key to colistin resistance. To help his friends, Fred makes a copy of his MCR1 gene and gives it to his friend Johnny. Now, Fred and Johnny are both colistin resistant. Fred can only do this because MCR1 is located on a plasmid, which can be transferred from one bacterium directly to another bacterium in the same generation through a process called conjugation. Now, both Fred and Johnny can keep making copies of their MCR1 genes and give them to all of their friends. In this way, colistin resistance can spread throughout the entire bacterial population. This process of spreading a gene throughout the same generation is called horizontal transmission. But it isn't enough for Fred to just protect his friends. It's also best for Fred to make sure his kids are protected for generations to come. Through copying his red plasmid, the plasmid containing MCR1, Fred can begin the process of passing his resistance to future generations as well. Once Fred divides into two new cells, each of the new cells will contain an MCR1 plasmid and also be colistin resistant. This is also true of Steve and Johnny and Rachel and Alexa and George and anyone else that Fred passed resistance to. All of their kids will be colistin resistant too. This process of passing a gene on to future generations is called vertical transmission. Now that we understand both horizontal and vertical transmission, it seems pretty clear how resistance can spread. But why is this a problem for us? Well, we never talked about where Fred and friends live. Fred and all his friends are currently living inside Michelle, their human host. The whole bacterial population is infectious and making Michelle very, very sick. So sick, in fact, that Michelle has to go to the hospital to try and receive treatment. Michelle's doctor, Dr. Wendy, has tried everything to help Michelle, every antibiotic known to man. But Fred and his friends are resistant to everything Wendy has tried. It's a battle of Fred and friends trying to survive and reproduce versus Michelle's immune system trying to keep her alive. Finally, Dr. Wendy has to try using colistin for Michelle, a last resort antibiotic that is only used if Michelle's condition is life-threatening and the infectious bacteria are resistant to all other antibiotics we have. Even now, after Wendy gave colistin to Michelle, resistance through MCR1 is spreading so rapidly through horizontal and vertical transmission that colistin might not be able to take out the bacterial population. So why did this situation happen in the first place? You might be thinking that we've been using antibiotics for a very long time very effectively. Why should they stop working now? The answer, at least for colistin resistance, is that we have been using antibiotics for a very long time, and we've been using them irresponsibly. Although colistin is a last resort antibiotic in people, it is actually very widely used in agriculture and commonly given to livestock. The evolution of the MCR1 gene was really inevitable, but we figured that the same bacteria don't often infect livestock and people. So it was fine to give colistin to cows, right? Wrong. While we've been pumping our livestock full of colistin, one of our only antibiotics that can protect people against the superbugs of the world, we somehow forgot about horizontal transmission. Remember how we learned earlier that Fred could make a copy of his MCR1 plasmid and give it to Johnny or Rachel or any of his other friends? Well, turns out, a bacterium like Fred that was living in livestock and developed colistin resistance could also make a copy of his MCR1 plasmid and give it to other bacterial populations, such as populations that can infect people. That's how we get infectious bacteria with the MCR1 gene, like Fred and his friends, in the first place. This seems to be a major oversight. We knew how horizontal transmission worked. We knew that colistin was one of our last lines of defense, and we kept giving it to livestock anyway. The World Health Organization even issued a statement in 2011 that made it abundantly clear that we needed to stop using colistin in agriculture immediately. 
But that didn't put enough pressure on governments or farmers to change farming practices, and we just kept using colistin anyway. As of now, Dr. Wendy has nothing else to offer Michelle. When new antibiotics are discovered, populations like Fred and Friends keep developing resistance very quickly. Sometimes this takes years, and sometimes days, but it always happens. We're locked in an arms race, trying to discover antibiotics faster than the populations can become resistant. Unfortunately, Michelle's situation is not just fiction, and it's not just our future. It's a reality that's already popping up in patients around the globe. This is not to say that we aren't trying to help. Researchers like Joanne are working tirelessly to discover new antibiotics. Researchers like Katie are working hard to find other solutions to fight bacterial infections. Doctors like Wendy help by making sure to only give antibiotics to patients when absolutely necessary in order to slow down the development of antibiotic resistance. And citizens like us can educate ourselves on the situation, support research efforts, and try to put pressure on our governments and doctors and farmers to follow the recommendations of the World Health Organization. We must treat antibiotics as the precious resource that they are, and hope we can find solutions for patients like Michelle before it's too late.